and uh, welcome to This is the Day. My name is Sarah Oteno. We are live on Family TV and also live on Family Radio. It is Furahi Day, as we like to call it here in Kenya. And if you are abroad, it's Friday, Fry, Friday for you. <laughs> but thank you so much for making time to join us today. Well, let me tell you something. More than 30 members of parliament are under the age of 35 and basically they're youths you know but someone would ask is incorporation of the youth in leadership especially in our country is it for the good of the people or is it actually working the opposite of what we expected so today we're looking at that youths and politics what it takes to actually put the youth in leadership and is it working for our good or is it for their on good and in studio i have jimmy bryan from nexus it and marketing how are you doing i'm doing fine how are you doing i'm fine carry busana to the studio Asante sana. all right this number is uh, quite encouraging 35 over 35 below the age of 35 yes. that's a good number yes do you think we were we actually right to incorporate them in leadership I think it's right, and maybe I hope that maybe soon we should be at 90%. The young people are energetic mm -hmm. and they're able to deliver. So I hope that soon they'll be at 90%. Mm -hmm. So that's positive, and it can go higher, I okay. believe. Yes. All right, but, but with the trend that we are starting as a country, you remember just the other day the cabinet reshuffle, and we'll be talking about that a bit later. Mm -hmm. But clearly it's pointed out that the president is working to ensure that the youths are involved trend you know it has it's 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 something that has just picked up will it continue in your <laughs> views as as Jimmy do you think it it ended there Ama, this is where it's going to stop I believe that <coughs> continuously you're having young people who are competent yeah and that's key we want young people who are able to drive the economy yeah. and then of course the young people are the majority in a population and in democracy we allow the majority to lead mm -hmm. so in this nation the majority are the youths so one of the ways of our president practicing democracy is to allow the young people into the system. Mm -hmm. But then again, I think we have a lot of young people who are doing amazing stuff. Yeah. And uh, that's why we are incorporating them into the systems of leadership. Mm -hmm. So I believe that traditionally we'd say that they're incompetent, they need time to learn. Mm -hmm. But then later on you realize that a lot of time things are changing, dynamics are changing. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing a lot of young people who are competent. So I believe that young people are good. Okay. And it's important that as Kenyans, as the public, we are noticing this because for these people to reach where they are, then maybe we voted them, we nominate, they were nominated in the parties. So we are going the right direction, right? So much, we are going the right direction. And I think we also have a lot of young people continually who are being progressive in what they do. Because if you look at someone like Zach, who was elected this year, the, 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 the secretary at the Ministry of Education, mm. he's a guy who I've seen over a couple of times consistent with what they do. Mm. And it's taken him years because I don't know what, how we want to describe Young if it's a story of your age or the number of years you've taken in the line of what you've chosen to do. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen Zach from the time when he was in university being the chairman of Sony. I've seen him in Kiber, I've seen him where. So there's a guy who's molded himself over time to do something. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of young people when you go to CSR Place. We have young people who are talking issues, politics, mm. issues, politics, issues, leadership. And they t they've been there for five years, they've been there for ten years. So they're not young. Mm -hmm. Even when you talk about projects, the ten-year project is not a, it's not a, a young or a short-term project. Yeah. So I believe that there are a lot of young people who have molded, they've chosen their lines, the people who are in economic, the mm -hmm. people who are in, in sexual reproductive health, different lines. Mm -hmm. And they've taken their time, they've done a lot in it, mm -hmm. and they're competent. So I believe that they are capable. Well, all these things considered from your view, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm tempted to believe. Are you saying this because you are a bit young? Because you look young. <laughs> I, I don't know whether an elderly person will, will hold the same sentiments you are saying. You know, you know, Is I it because of the age? I'm a, I'm a <laughs> <laughs> Jesus died at age 33. <laughs> yes. But then what he achieved, there's no other leader who's ever achieved in the world. Mm. Luther King died at age 30 something. I think it's 33 or 36 or 39. Yeah. What he has achieved, very few people in their 90s have achieved. Mm -hmm. Tom Boyer died at age 39. Yeah. And what he achieved, very many people have not achieved. Mm -hmm. So I think when we look at the process of leadership, you have to negate the issue of 
age in terms yeah. of numbers. Mm -hmm. But we look at the level of experience, we look at the level of commitment, we look at the calling in mm -hmm. someone. Because mm -hmm. you realize that some of the best leaders were not even in the issue of age. Mm -hmm. The people who just from the word go knew what they wanted mm -hmm. and they set out to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think let's use the example of Jesus <laughs> and say that is fine. Yeah. yeah, all right, it works to the advantage of the youth. So, yeah. continue sending in any questions and any comments you have about youth and leadership, youth and governance, youth and politics, because that is what we are discussing today. The WhatsApp number to use is 0786 316 316, and also through the SMS line 20316. And on Facebook and Twitter, you can get me at Family Radio 316, and let's get talking because because clearly, Jimmy, politics is something that affects all of us. As much as sometimes we do not want to associate ourselves with, it yes. really affects all of us, right? Yes. Okay, so let's uh, go back to the current government. And for some time, it has been talk of town. You know, President Uru Kenyatta and his group of leadership, they've given some quite heavy jobs to some elderly people. And we'll start with the, the former vice president, yes. Moody Awori. Yes. He's 92, right? And he's holding the docket of Sports, Art and Social Development Fund. You know? Mm. Someone would say, I, this is, this is, yani uh, amesonga, amekula chumvi, you know? Mm. And we also had uh, the former governor, former MP, sorry, for Odaya. That is Mary Wamboi at 69 and she still held a very strong docket in government mm. why do you think maybe the president is focusing on these people is it because of their experience Amani VP. why why the elderly in government i think on this issue i'd like to look at it on two trajectories yeah the first one i'd look at mary wambui case because I know one guy who's uh, one person who's called Bukimburu, and mm. she's one person who really said that this is not possible. Yeah. And they really mobilized. They went to court, and when when the when the win was uh, was in court yesterday, mm. there are some of the people who are very happy because they they are young people who mm. really went out to set out a cause that we do not want someone who does not feel our pain to set out a pace for us. Mm -hmm. You cannot be someone who's never farm, been in a farm or you and never you practiced farming and you want yeah. to say that you want to champion for the rights of farmers. Mm -hmm. You cannot be someone who's never been in civil war and you are or in civil injustice and you want to say that you want to champion for civil rights, mm -hmm. for civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. So I believe that Mary Mambui do not know, does not know the pains of the young people who are facing <laughs> unemployment. Really? She's not been there. Mm -hmm. I want to say so. Mm -hmm. So so even if she's been there, she's she, over over here she's really gone past that. Mm -hmm. So I think she was not the right person to represent us in that docket. And I'm very happy and I hope that it's going to be a complete overhaul and they're going to have someone who at heart, he knows the experience of the young people, mm -hmm. what they're going through, mm -hmm. and is going to help us really not, not you know, we, do, we are tired of just having people for the sake of flowering. We want someone who comes in and creates changes because there are a lot of young people who are going through hardships after university, after their trainings, they can't get employment. So we cannot make this issue a joke. Mm -hmm. We just pick someone somewhere and come and put there to flower that place so that they can be in government payroll. You want people who come and are action oriented and can do something. But, may, but, may, uh -huh, sorry. Yeah, so maybe on the issue of Moody Awori, just that's on the other side. Mm. There's a book by the autobiography called The Riding on a Tiger. That's the autobiography of Moody Awori. Mm -hmm. And this one guy I really admire as an old man who's really set up president in this nation. Mm -hmm. It's during his tenure that really tried to make a lot of changes. In, uh, in in our let me let me call them jails mm -hmm. and in his tenure he's really tried to do a lot of things and i believe even you today if you are to set out to even start a church to start an an establishment or a business yes you may work want to work with your peers but there's a level that you may need to bring in someone who could be elderly than you to really guide you on issues of experience to really guide you on issues of partnerships mm -hmm. to really guide you on issues of networks because some of these people if they are willing, mm. because there are people who, when they get to 65, 60, they say that I'm tired. I want I to retire. I, I want to retire yeah. and I want to rest. Mm -hmm. Some go to holidays, some want to live a calm life. That's them. But then there's someone who says that to the last day, I'll mm. be here. We know of Manu Chandaria mm -hmm. at his age and he's doing amazing stuff for oh, this yes. nation yes. and beyond. Mm -hmm. So I believe that maybe as we move forward, we, we will start looking at these things not per se on the issues of age, but on the records of someone. Mm -hmm. I believe so much on the record of Mzemudi Awori. I've seen where he's come from. I've seen where he is and where he, what he's done for this country. So I don't have any problem with him because I believe that these people come in and they put uh, that seed that the young people need. Mm -hmm. Because at times we leave an office and put it there uh, with the, 
young people entirely. It could be a mess. So yeah, we need also true. that someone to look mm -hmm. up to. Who's this person? And I like that you've pointed out about um, Zemudi Awari. And someone would argue this way, you know. Mm. It's a matter of experience. So these people have clean records. They have worked for our nation and they have worked well. So I, as a person, if I was the president, I would prefer to put there someone who's really worked well, you know, and there's evidence of his work, and not just someone, a young person, who does not have the experience, maybe at a Hannah Records of the works. Mm -hmm. Someone would argue that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I mean, that's, that, that's very true, because I believe that, even if you are to, because I believe that in all these ministries and positions, mm -hmm. there are places where I'd maybe, let's call it, the president would be willing to take a risk. But then there are places where he's also at his heart is also very serious about them, mm -hmm. and he wants to put something that's tested, that's tried and tested. Yeah, that's why you occasionally find even in a lot of companies, they have people inside the organization, or they have people who they can employ cheaply mm -hmm. to head the organization. But then they go out to bring people who could be much more experienced, who could be much more expensive to hire. Mm -hmm. But because they've been tried, they've been tested, and they have faith in them, they say that in case, instead of taking someone who you are not very sure about, let's take this person mm. and pay a 10 times more salary. Mm -hmm. So I think it's okay. So mm -hmm. I, to me, I think it's not a battle of the old and the young. Mm -hmm. That's what the battle we want to pick as a nation. Because when you go to some counties in Kuala, in Kilif, you find the elders are killed mm. because, you know, a lot of stuff, because there's that battle of the young and the old. Yeah. That's not the battle we want to pick. Mm -hmm. Because what happens tomorrow if you are the one who is old? And when you were young, you killed people because you thought they were taking your space. Mm -hmm. So I think that the battle we are picking as a nation is not a battle of the young and the old, but it's a battle of how do we come together, how can we create a, have the best to create the best for this country. Mm -hmm. Yes. And don't you think sometimes it's a matter of the money, the cash? You know, <laughs> but everyone wants good money. And in government, they say there's good money. So maybe they're working their way up to the, <laughs> to the chairs because of the money. That, that, that's true. Maybe money is a motivator yeah. to, to what people do. Mm -hmm. But I believe that real leaders are not motivated by money. Because as a young person, you want to think that the motivation is money. Mm. Someone will ask you what you are doing, so are you paid? Mm -hmm. That's what many people want to ask. But I believe that there's a level of experience, there's a level of calling that when you get to, your, your motivation is not about money, yeah. but about what can you do to change your generation, mm -hmm. about service delivery. So... Someone like Mzemudi, is that guy not rich enough to sustain his life for the next a I thousand years? Is. If, if I there's, think he if there's is. that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I believe that at time most people who are driven to leadership mm -hmm. are not driven by the issues of money. They are looking at what can they do mm -hmm. with the short life they have on earth. Okay. Yes. Well, we have Calvin Sudiambo who is saying thank you so very much for that discussion. Really touches on a, a lot of youth and that is a plus. Uh, good evening. My name is Alan. I am watching the repeat program uh, about, uh, you know, that's on another show. But thank you so much for reaching out. I'll make sure to reach back to you. Uh -huh. mm. You are saying your name is Charity. I love the discussion, really touches on the young people, and that's a good one. Maurice Wakabete, thank you so much. You're saying you're grateful for the discussion. Uh, we have Jacob Soita, Asante Sana. You are tuned in. Mungu Wakubariki. Well, so there's this argument, you know, mm -hmm. and I'll take an example of the, the opposition leader, Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. He's a bit elderly. Amekula chumvi. You must give it. And just the other day was his birthday. Mm. So someone would say uh, the reason why a lot of young people are not taking up political positions and leaders, leadership positions is because the old are refusing to retire. He's, he's, been the, he's been the opposition party leader for quite some time. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell me that in ODM there are no young politicians. Mm. They must be there. Mm. Do you think that's the reason enough? Is it reason enough to think that uh, that's why what Toto Vijana Vijana and the youth are not in leadership positions? First, I'd like to say that the youths are in leadership. But then, can you start? Babu, can you trust Babu with the, with the president of the presidents of this nation? Can we? Let me let me throw <laughs> That's it back a question to you. To you. <laughs> can, can, we? can you? That, that's a guy who's going to shoot someone simply because you've disagreed <laughs> over, yeah. over, over over an issue. Mm -hmm. Really, at times, also even as we continue to trust the young people. The emotional quotient, <laughs> quotients, mm -hmm, we call it. Mm -hmm. This basic intelligence of some of them are, I don't know if it's the drugs they use, <laughs> some of them <laughs> use, or it's just the immaturity that at times comes with the, with the overwhelming power that comes when you mm -hmm. get yourself somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I believe that 
we cannot trust Babu you know, with, the, with, the, with the leadership of this nation mm -hmm. as a president. Maybe at his age now. Right May, now. Maybe let's hope someday mm -hmm. he matures. Mm -hmm. uh, some days I, I need, so, 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 so you look at it from the perspective that we need these people who've advanced, who, who, who've, who've gone through better challenges, if I can call it, mm -hmm. because they have that maturity to handle a nation. This nation we are talking about is not a bottle of egg, a mm -hmm. bottle of water mm -hmm. that anyone can pour down and someone can, will come and refill. Mm -hmm. Because just a small mistake can really change the course of a nation. So I believe that when we talk about this nation and we talk about young people taking mm -hmm. over leadership, mm -hmm. I believe that those, those young people who can do that, and I believe that we are a democratic nation. So if someone feels he's young enough and is competent enough to be the president, he can mm -hmm. go and apply. Comply mm -hmm. with the chapter 6 of the constitution and go. Mm -hmm. Apply. And if you win, go ahead and lead this nation. Mm -hmm. But I believe that at times we also need that nurturing from these people to grow. Because you look at people like Babo, you know, you're very happy for them because they're young people who are able to achieve yeah. at a young age. Yeah. But then you look at times at the, uh, you look at them at times and you feel sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as we feel sorry for them and as they get mentored, mm -hmm. let's hope that in future they'll be ready. Mm -hmm. But for now, most <laughs> some of these young people are not ready to take up these leadership positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but we must agree that there are some young people that we put in the leadership position. The one that is uh, more famous is the Igembe South constituency in Meru County, the member of parliament there, John Paul Muirigi, who's born 1994. That's young. He's about 26 this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you see? Yeah. And, and that's, that's a really good age to get into politics. Someone would say... I remember during campaign, he was actually using a boda boda, a bicycle mm. to campaign. Mm. And then he got uh, stories are he got a gift from the deputy president of a vehicle. And then now he started rolling big, you know, and all these young politicians now as the money cashes in, you know, they start becoming now a mini MP. Can we say we did a mistake? Can I say I did a mistake? Because, and the reason why I'm saying this is that late last year there was a complaint from Parliament that these young people are not actually coming to Parliament. They're not participating. And it was raised by Aden Dwale, the, the leader of majority in Parliament, who mm -hmm. said uh -uh, they're complaining, but if they're given a chance, they're not participating. So I think this week I witnessed something. I saw a young man who took a walk, mm -hmm. a long walk, and I believe it's a walk to freedom. This young man left his village somewhere very far and walked with just two, two pieces of, of, of bus of stop. Mm -hmm. into a school. Mm -hmm. And I saw similar stories where someone walked barefoot and went to school. Mm -hmm. This is a 14 year old. This is a guy who has a quest for something. Yeah. It's a quest for change, it's a quest for leadership, mm -hmm. it's a quest for a better, a better future. Because it takes a lot of courage for a 14 year old to just say that I know it's impossible, but I will go and try. Mm -hmm. And in them, I read a lot of maturity, not just about them, but even about this nation. And in them, I learned that this thing does not necessarily come. You don't need to be elderly to, need to know that there's a quest for, for change. Yes. And you don't need to wait to be old to be part of that change. So these people walked, and true to, true to what they tried, change came their way. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think the guy who went to the boat bus of people are able to marshal and I think yeah. he's, he's, he's paid he's up to university. Paid? Uh -huh. Even university is paid. Mm -hmm. And I think the same story is about the, the, this MP of Uganda South. This is a guy who believed that he can be part of change. Mm -hmm. And he never looked at himself as what do I not have. Mm -hmm. That's where most of us start. You start from how incompetent I have. I don't have a college degree. I don't have the necessary skills. I don't mm -hmm. have the necessary connections. And we end up achieving something. But this is a guy who just woke up and said that I think things are not working right. Mm -hmm. And I can be part of this change. And yeah. he set out. He didn't say that I don't have a car that, that MPs used to campaign. He said that whatever mm -hmm. I have, I'll, I'll use, use that. that. Mm -hmm. And he used that and he became part of change in mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. So I believe those are inspiration stories to this country. And they inspire this country to say that it's possible. Mm -hmm. And we can start every, anywhere, we can start with anything. And we can do it. So this guy is a big inspiration to me and to this nation that it's possible that the old president, that you must have money for you to run a campaign and win. That's an, an old adage. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy for him. And as he continues to grow, I wish him well. And he's an inspiration to many people who are coming after us. He's an inspiration to this class eight boy. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be an inspiration to even younger generation who are coming after us. Yeah. So to me, it's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And what about those who are not really reciprocating what we expected from them? 
<laughs> maybe <laughs> we elected them na bado barabara ni mbaya you never see the mp for at least you see them once in a week kama kuna rally in the area what really causes them to change i think no no I, uh, for sure the kind of leadership that we are moving into mm. is you know you know kitambo you used to wake up and expect that every problem that you have it's the MP who's going to sort. Mm. That it's he's going to bury our elderly, the, our dead. Mm -hmm. That is going to feed our <laughs> our poor. Mm -hmm. That is going to is going to clothe our naked. But then there's also an individual with personal challenges. Their salaries are not, are not that big mm. to say for a fact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and you know with with the systems coming into place and a lot of accountability, it's not just that there is no docket where they just go and pick money and distribute. Mm. Sometimes these people choose not to come to the village or to their constituents because they fear being asked. Mm -hmm. And then. One thing I like is the fact that there's devolution, and devolution has structures. Mm. Right now, it's not the MP who constructs roads. Yeah. You know, in the past, if the road was bad, we could say that our MP, our MP. Mm -hmm. Right now, he can just voice it out. He can just champion. But you know, for a fact, that is not the MP mm -hmm. who, 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 who is responsible, who is for, responsible the for doing those yeah. roads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I believe at times we have much more expect. We have a lot of expectations about our leaders, and they also have their own personal challenges they're trying to achieve. And at times, they also now don't know what to do. So they, they end up starting to play a, a game of cut and bounce. Mm -hmm. But then I believe that as, they go, as the society continues to progress, some of these things will now, we have structures that if someone wants to do A, B, C, D, there is this procedure that we can follow mm -hmm. and make them happen. Because majorly they are our representative. What is it we lack? Go and voice it out on our behalf. Mm -hmm. It's not like go and pick money somewhere and bring it to us, mm -hmm. which is a mentality that, that this country has had for years. Okay. Yes. Am I right to say that some of the representatives, the young representatives we have chosen, take that opportunity to benefit themselves and re literally rise to wealth and sisi uh, tunabaki tukiumia. Can I say that sometimes they take advantage of the posts? <laughs> I think, I think, I think another thing about power is that it mm. comes with its fear yes <laughs> because if you are what if i lose here what if this happens to me what if what if mm. and then in the in the midst of fear you want security you you, you want to marshal anything that you can get mm. you want to accumulate so then it mm -hmm. comes with with what we'd call um, primitive accumulation yeah because everyone wants to rise to power then grab everything that's greed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> greed for yeah, lack of a greed. better word yeah. it's greed yeah, right? so if you you get into the table and you want to marshal everything because you think it's like you get into a dinner table mm. and there's food mm. then you find this kid who's lacked food for a lot of time for many days he gets in that table then he, has, he picks that big plate then puts everything there mm -hmm. then puts them here in mm. his side then he realizes that you can only eat so far that's one then number two in their mind they know that Time and Uma, yeah. what if Nikos Yeah. So to him, he knows that the, 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 the thing to do is really have a lot so that tomorrow, when tomorrow comes, you have something still to eat. Mm -hmm. So I think it's even a mentality war. Because some of these people we elect, they believe that Kesho kutakuwa kubaya, so I have to accumulate a lot. A, a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which I believe is something we'd like to change. Mm -hmm. Because anyway, these things, we just get them here and we leave them here. Mm -hmm. You can't go with them anywhere. Resources, uh, basic laws of economics, in the long run, they just redistribute themselves. Mm. That's why even money, you, you cannot have money because you'll have it, then it will go out, then it will redistribute itself. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a mental issue where these people believe that you have to accumulate primitively. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Okay. We have someone who texted in, and let's just sample uh, one of these comments. Uh, they're saying, hi, Sarah, thank you for that discussion. You didn't give me your name, though. Unasema, it is unfortunate that the young parliamentarians we elect end up misbehaving. Take the case study of Babu Owino recently. He shot on someone. That is bad example to young people. Then it gives us the doubt that maybe the elderly parliamentarians and politicians are better off. If I didn't give my give my name, my name is Jimmy Bryan. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm an IT and uh, and communications <laughs> specialist. Uh, so sorry for that. Uh -huh. I think that we cannot use one individual to describe them uh, and then to describe even if you do basic statistics. Yeah. You not draw conclusion from one parameter. Yeah. So you cannot take Babuino. To, 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 to summarize the nature of leadership in this mm, nation mm -hmm. and beyond. Mm -hmm. I know that there are a lot of young people who are, who are doing great things. Yes. They could be 
in parliament or they could be in their businesses and a lot of young people who are coming out and they're creating opportunities and they're empowering this nation. Mm -hmm. So I believe that we cannot use one babuino. Babuino is just a sample of the rest. Mm -hmm. So we cannot use him to, to, to come generalize. to generalize. Yeah, oh, okay. So let Babuino, he's just, he's living his life the best way he can, but I believe that there are a lot of young people who are very responsible. When you look at people like Mutula, that's a very responsible young man I'd love to believe and mm -hmm. he tries to contain power that comes with him. And we have a lot of young people who also are in business, who are in different sectors, mm -hmm. who are doing very great things. So mm -hmm. we cannot use one person to draw conclusion. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know what's funny is that uh, as young people, we have so many people who would come to the common mananchi and I'm going hey, next time I want you to vote for me, they're young, of course, right? Mm. We already have young people in power. And they would come telling us, hey, if I go in, then I will do this. Mm -hmm. I will make a difference in the, in the sector, this sector, mm -hmm. the business sector. They make promises. How about we just m use this I will, I will, and the promises to better the young people who are in politics already? Do you think that will be a good move? Ama, they just come rally for themselves. So this is already a competition between young people who, both of them, if they're two people, they both want to be in power. Do you think it would be better to better those who are already in power? Ama kila mtu ajitete. I think because we have, we have so many young people who, who've come out to say, hey, 2022, it's me and the people. Please vote for me. <laughs> I like that, Klam <laughs> Yeah. That's a rule of democracy. And I believe that we are de a democratic nation. Mm. So number one, Klam mm -hmm. And then another thing, I think, for a long time, our political system has been shaped by manipulation. Mm -hmm. Where <clears throat> when it's time for election, someone comes and gives you a lot of promises and you get excited, elated, mm -hmm. <laughs> for lack of a better word. Yeah. Then in the midst of that election, you vote them in, mm -hmm. hoping that they are going to be your sol the solution to your problems. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe as we move forward, you are going to have ideological politics, where you conform to ideology, not someone to help you. Mm -hmm. And what is, it you are, what, what is it that you are playing to, to grow this ideology? That I believe that this nation, we need to have clean water. Mm -hmm. That I believe that this nation, you have to, everyone needs to have access to education. Because those young people high, were highlighted in the TV. Mm. How many young people who cannot go to schools because they were not highlighted? How many young ladies who maybe are going through different experiences but they cannot go to school? Mm. So I think that someday we are going to have ideology that I believe that everyone should go to school. Yes. And, uh, and that's the ideology I conform to and I support that. So maybe one of the reasons why politics is still shaped this way is because it's about manipulation. Mm. Someone comes and tells you that I'm going, to, I'm going to do A, B, C, D, then you get excited, you vote them in. Mm -hmm. Then when they get there, they say that, ah, I did not do this, but what will I do again? I'm going to accrue wealth. Mm -hmm. Then I'll come and give them money and manipulate them again. Mm -hmm. Then they'll, they'll still give you. So that's what happens. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's what we are looking to change in the next five, in the next ten years, in the next moving forward. Mm -hmm. I believe it's going to change and we are going to ideologies. What do you conform to? Do mm -hmm. I believe in it? Okay. If I do, let's go. Mm -hmm. yes. So there's someone who's texted in something interesting, and I wanted to tackle this before we take a short break. It is unfortunate that as much as young people want to rise to power, there is the game of pull up your own, in quotes. So, uh, I'm th I'm, from what I understand by this, if you, you are not raised in a political family, as much as I'm a young person, I want to lead my people. But if I'm not brought up in a political family, then there's no one to pull me up. They only pull their own people. That's, the, that's a problem. That's a problem for our nation. Don't you think? There's a lot of... This has been happening from, from way back, I believe. Yeah. Even when you go to employment, it's easier for someone to... To pull you uh, out. To pull you out. <laughs> yeah. It's just an easy way of doing things. But then uh, when we look at stories of, 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 of this Ikembe South MP and what he did, mm. it shows possibility. So I believe those of you or those of us who are not in that system, you have to believe that it's possible. Mm. If someone can show you that it can be done, then we have to have that faith that it can be done. Mm -hmm. And it could be a long process. You know, there's a, there's a time I joke that those of us who come from other families, you have to show, ten t show up ten times mm. when others are showing up one time. Yes. So are you willing to show up ten times? That, 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 yeah, that's the only difference because that the person, because I know someone, I'll only say, Dad, I need a job. Mm. And uh, he will be like, all right, let me look into that. Mm -hmm. And within a week, we'll find a placement. Yeah. But what of you, who is equally qualified, but you don't have that dad, the that dad to call? Mm -hmm. You have to show up 10 times. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. You cannot be compla complaining from the comfort of your bed. 
You cannot be complaining from the full comfort of social media. You have to show up ten times more as they show up. It's just a just process, and I believe it's possible. We've learned it from these young people mm -hmm. who are doing amazing stuff. And let's show up ten times if you want to be there. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a, yeah, from the look of things, we, wa we have to work extra, extra hard. Harder. Oh, okay. yeah. Because someone has to do it. Mm -hmm. If not you, then you are a child, or you are a child's, ch child's child. Someone will have to do it. Mm -hmm. Someone will have to show up ten times. Okay. Yeah. All right, continue sending in the questions and comments you have through the WhatsApp number 0786-316-316 and the SMS line 20316. And my name is Sarah Otieno. I still have Jimmy Bryan in studio. We're talking about young people and politics and governance as we rise to being politicians, <laughs> if I may say that, Brian. Yeah. Uh, well, do you, do you at some point aspire to be a politician? <laughs> do you? For now, that's not my aspiration. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so answer. let me talk of now. <laughs> <laughs> for now. Yeah. All right. We have uh, Marianne who's texted in and said, Thank you for that discussion. Please open up our minds and our eyes, especially the youth, that politics is not the only way to go. Some aspire, but they are not qualified and are not good as politicians. You know, a lot of people just say, I want to be a politician. I want to be the MCA. Mm. But sometimes maybe they're not, that's not the only way to go. That's true. Yeah. Mm. And we have many cases of people, instead of focusing on talent or something, they don't want to go to the, the, poli the MP, MCA direction. I think <laughs> on that one, maybe, I think we all go through a process of self-search. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a long journey of really finding up finding out who are you yeah. and why are you in this earth. Mm -hmm. What is it that you are meant to do? Because I believe that as a Christian that all of us are sent into this world on an assignment. Mm -hmm. That upon accomplishing you are taken back mm. to go be with the Lord. That's where our home is, mm. my belief. Mm -hmm. So I think the only struggle that we go through is really to find out what were you brought into this world to do. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of people who want to be copycats, who want to do what they think works. Yeah. So because people have seen politics as a short way to wealth, they want to be there. And that's the problem. Yeah, so someone mm -hmm. wants to be there, not per se, to do something to change the course of a nation, but because he has heard or he has seen that when someone gets, in, gets here, they, 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 they become grow rich. So until <laughs> that day, when we start knowing really what is it you want to do, because there are people, there's someone who is in politics, but they do better, mm -hmm. and they'd be in business. Mm -hmm. There's someone who's, who's in business, and they do better. In and politics. Then, yeah, in politics, or in a social setting, you set up like a church. Yeah. They make good pastors and priests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they are, that's a priest that is wasting a lot of time siring a million children. Mm. Then they could be <laughs> <laughs> a priest to change the course of the world. Mm. So I believe that that's self uh, soul search to really find out what is it that you are passionate about, what mm -hmm. is it that you are meant to do in this world, because our stay is very short. We are oh, not yeah. here to, to search for wealth and then die. Mm. What's the, we are here, I believe that life is more than just the, the, the journey of searching for money and wealth, mm -hmm. then you die. Okay. You know, it's more. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what most times hold us up, that there's so that people, even people who go to university, mm. they are doing this course because, because this course has money. Those, mm. are, those are crap. And then we, we need to also understand that not every young person is a politician. You know? True. Okay. Like me, I'm not a politician. <laughs> 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 All right. Sour, sour. So let's talk about the reshuffle of the cabinet that happened the other day with the president. And he appointed seven youths, yeah, mm. to work. And he said, he said very, very, uh, he pointed out clearly that he wants these young people to work with the elderly who are already in government and in governance to make sure that we move a step a uh, notch higher. And they were appointed as the chief administrative secretaries. Do you think that's a good way to go? To and me? do you feel like they will blend? Because <laughs> we might just appoint them and they want jelly. To me, one thing is just it shows the willingness of the nation. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the, take the nation to call her her. Yes. So the nation is continually willing to take on younger people because as she continues to grow tired, she's willing to absorb younger energies mm -hmm. to drive it into the next cause mm -hmm. of economic empowerment, of economic development, to spark growth, because we are a nation that is still on its growth stage. Yeah. So we need people who are coming to drive this change. And there's, there has been that cry, there has been that fallout, and we've been crying that we need much more energetic people to drive this thing two times faster. Mm -hmm. And the nation, the nation has been listening and has been hearing. Mm -hmm. And gradually they're allowing this, this crop of young people to come over and take, take leadership. Because in short, he's saying that I want these people to come and learn so that they can be prepared for bigger things ahead. So to me, it shows the willingness 
of the system to allow younger people to take over leadership. Mm -hmm. And I believe even if they perform or not, let's say from that point, that willingness in itself to allow, mm -hmm. it shows that we are in the right trajectory. Mm -hmm. That even in the near future, young people are going to be accepted even for bigger positions. Yeah. And two, I believe they are going to blend. I've listened and learned from some of them. And there are people who are competent. Mm. There are people who have been doing things before. They are not young people who are sitting back at home watching television the whole day mm -hmm. or doing nothing. There are people who have been in this field and they've been championing for different things, for different issues. Mm -hmm. So they're just, they're just given something bigger. But if you, if, if, you, if you take someone who's been playing football in some village mm -hmm. and you give him a, a bigger team to play in, yes, it could be, there could be that culture shock. But the fact that he's been excelling in, the vill in that village team mm -hmm. shows that he can. Even Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the best footballers we've had in this generation, yeah. he was picked from some tiny village. And yes, he's, he had some culture, culture shock, but over time he performed. Mm -hmm. So the fact that being taken from that minority, I think that's sometimes that what causes crumble. But talent is talent, no matter mm -hmm. where it is. Mm -hmm. So it could be young, but it's a young talent. And people have seen it, and people have monitored it, and people believe in it. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what happened. We believe in these young people. And maybe some of them can take too long still shocked. Mm. That, 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 that's, that's dynamics of power. Yeah. So we may not, I mean, personally, I may not be quick to rush, uh, in rushing to judge them mm -hmm. because some people take too long to absorb power. Mm -hmm. But some people adapt very fast. But the fact that they've been, people have believed in them shows that they can. Mm -hmm. And majority of them will, will do that. And they're opening spaces for many people. Many young people are coming up to take these positions. Okay. Yes. And now as a country... As the people of Kenya, as Kenyans, what can we do to ensure that at least more youths are now absorbed into governance and we have leaders who understand, you know, only a youth will understand more of what a youth wants deep, deep down in their heart. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to ensure that these numbers grow and, of course, to the good of the people? Yes, I think we have to be proactive and we have to take up leadership positions. Mm -hmm. There's that joke that that, that power is the power is taken. Mm. It's not given. That's a joke. But then, in a small way, it speaks the reality that you cannot sit. They, they were not just picked randomly. Mm. These people have been seen. Mm -hmm. They have records. They've done things over time, and that's why they were there. Yeah. You know, you cannot just be sleeping and hoping that the good day comes. You, <laughs> we have this is the day mm. for today. <laughs> but then, for this is the day to come, you have to be doing things in line with what you want to do. Systematically. Systematically, okay. being patient. Mm -hmm. uh, even the Bible says that those who, who work mm -hmm. as they wait mm -hmm. will never lack any good thing. Mm -hmm. So you having that patience as you work, I think that's what's key. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of young people who are in spaces. We have spaces like Siasa Place, which is nurture, nurturing a lot of young people mm -hmm. in, in areas of politics. Mm -hmm. If you're a young person and you're passionate about politics, go and, you know, such are the platforms where you learn to address yourself, you mm -hmm. learn to really know what are the needs, because at times you think that what you have are the needs, you're just being emotional mm -hmm. and you want to <laughs> you want to address real issues here. Yeah. yeah we, we, when you looked at areas like Asarani the other day, they were having, yeah, let me call it a strike war demo, but these are young people who came together and said, we are tired, mm -hmm. we are paying taxes to this nation and we have a right mm -hmm. when we have a need to be addressed. Okay. And these are young people who took four days out of their working time, four days that they could spend even with their loved ones and, with the, and they were on the roads saying that we have to be hard, mm -hmm. and they were hard. So I believe that just taking up that responsibility, that I have this need and you're going to listen to me, mm -hmm. that's what's going to change the course of leadership and it's going to let the young people to take over. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, it's funny. Uh, I was thinking about, as you said, that I was, I was thinking in the back of my mind about how people start small, even in schools. You know, you have the debate clubs and we have people now debating as oppositions. And that's how it starts. There's, they, they, that's very true. There's this thing that Steve Jobs said that you cannot connect the dots moving forward. Mm. You can only connect the dots moving backwards. backwards uh -huh. That's a powerful thing. Yeah. That that what you have now cannot be measured by what you'll have. Mm -hmm. But you can only measure, measure it by how consistent, how have you been moving backwards. Mm -hmm. So most of these things are people who've started in small places, they've started in small ways, they've grown and they've been here and they've been here and they've taken different ch chances, they have volunteered their time, they have volunteered their skills, and over time they grow, people get to notice them. That's how even our pre the President Obama, that's how he started. He mm -hmm. was a community mobilizer mm -hmm. and he would spend time with the community doing A, B, C, D, not for money, 
Mm. Because you have a crop of young people here who always want to say, oh, how much, how much? <laughs> it's not always about money. Yeah. God who puts you on the earth will give you the capacity to feed yourself mm -hmm. and to get what you need. So at times we just have to be proactive about doing something, not about how much. Mm -hmm. Because at times you get limited so much with the, the story of how much, so that you spend a whole month in the house doing nothing, when you could volunteer your time to go somewhere and be part of that change you want. Mm -hmm. So I believe that we also have to learn the virtue of volunteering so that we don't always sit down and say that how much, how much. At times mm -hmm. just go and do good. Okay. That's the reason for our existence. Mm -hmm. So over time you get to learn. When I started out, I started out with a lot of volunteering and that's how I, I got to know different people. I got to interact with different people. I got to learn from different people and over time you get yourself growing mm -hmm. and i believe no one should ever sit down and say that there's no opportunity mm -hmm. because there are people who even struggle after university to get an internship yeah that's true. just to go and work somewhere and you're not paid mm -hmm. it's because when you're in university you don't even spend time to just go and know an extra person who's outside know what mm -hmm. soft skill people want mm -hmm. know what it takes so i believe that it has to come from the heart of the nation and the heart of the people the desire to be more and to change and for themselves to send themselves out there. Mm -hmm. When you read the last book of Matthew, uh, Matthew at the end, <coughs> Jesus tell, tell, tells of his disciples that as my father sends me, so I send you. Go so out I, there. Go out, go out. Yeah. yeah. So let people go out mm -hmm. and be part of the change you want. Okay. Yes. As Jimmy, do you think at some point we will have a president who is less than 35 years old? First, we will have a president who is a woman. Yes. But it will first have to happen uh, happen in the United States. Why? Why uh, the U.S.? Then, then we'll have a president who's 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 younger than thirty five. Okay. Uh, he's going to come, but it could take a little bit of time. But that's in Kenya, right? It's going to happen, but it's going to happen in the U.S. first. Why the U.S.? <laughs> I think that's a discussion that we're supposed to take up. <laughs> but for now, thank you so much for enlightening us and coming to the show. We really appreciate that. And have yourself a beautiful evening. And of course, the weekend, please take care of yourself and your loved ones. Say hi to them. And thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Sarah Otieno.